Hey friends, one of the great things about Tana is that you can use title expressions to increase the information you see at a glance as you're working in your Tana graph. So let's jump right into Tana and I'm going to show you how that works and what that can do for you. So let's, for example, say that I'm trying to track client meetings. I'm consulting with people on implementing Tana in the team and I want to track these meetings. So what I, of course, want to do is first create a super tag, right? So um, that's what I'm going to do. And after I've written um, the name of the super tag in a node here, I do command K and then convert to super tag. And now I have a super tag called client meeting. Now, when I open this up, what I will do is I'm going to create a field for the client, right? I want to record who the client is going to be. And now that I have this super tag, what I can of course do is start recording my client meetings, right? So for example, I have a weekly check-in with a client and I've tagged this with client meeting, right? Awesome. Um, now, if I have a field here for the client, right? So that later I can filter um, and search for all the meetings with a particular client, I'm going to fill in here Acme Corp as well. But that means I have to enter the client twice here, right? That's kind of annoying and um, too much work. So what we can do instead, we can go into the super tag definition again and click here on build title from field. And if I go here and say name with client, you see here with Acme Corp is appended to the text I've written into the node, right? So I can go ahead and delete this part over here. And now I have weekly check-in with Acme Corp. Um, and of course, if I change anything here, that is immediately reflected above as well. And if I have another weekly check-in with another client, I only have to tag it with client meeting and you already see with client is automatically appended, but because client is empty, that also prompts me to not forget, okay, I need to fill in the client fields. Let's say for example, I'm consulting here with Google, right? So let's reflect a second on what happened here. Um, name refers to the thing I type into the node myself and the dollar sign, curly braces, and then the field name is then appended to that in the end. One note, one thing you have to make sure is that one thing you want to pay attention to is that you can place name at the very end here and that also works with Google Weekly Check-in, but then you can't edit that node anymore, right? Like there's nothing I can I can type here. Name needs to be placed at the top of the title of the node so that you can still edit it, right? And the cool thing is this with Acme Corp and this with Google shows up in searches as well. So if I'm searching now for client meetings, you see here weekly check-in with Acme Corp is also visible here. And if I show this in a table, for example, that makes it really easy to um, have this in the main field here on the left side and filter for that and look for that, right? Now, the other thing that you do is that you include system fields, fields that the system has kind of hidden from you, right? It doesn't show up here in the template for the super tag, but the information exists inside Tana for that particular node. And one thing, for example, you can do is reference the day node that a specific node lives on. So let me show you what that means. Um, I'm going to move these two check-ins here to daily nodes. So these now live on the uh, today node, right? Today's Sunday as I record this. And I can now reference today's date, so Sunday, here and have it show up here as well, even though I have zero fields available here. So for example, if I had these meetings today, 
this is what I can do. Sys date from day node, right? So dollar sign, curly braces, and then sys colon date from day node. And you see here, weekly check-in with Google on today, Sunday, uh, 12th of February, right? So this is super powerful because it allows you to use information that isn't even in the fields you have created for a day node and surface it and have it at the top and see it immediately at a glance, right? So that's super, super powerful and useful in my experience. Now, let's say, for example, that I want to track incoming calls, right? If I'm a consultant, I might need to or want to um, really track the minutes I spend on the phone when a client calls me um, so that if I'm on a retainer, for example, um, I can say, okay, we had this amount of uh, time spent already um, in calls this week, everything over needs to be paid extra, for example. So let me create a super tag for incoming calls and then we'll define the title expression for that together. So here we have our incoming call super tag um, also with a client. And as I said, the goal is to track when someone calls, when the call is over so that I have a record of when I interacted with the client and can bill them for that time, right? So what we want to do is we're going to go here into build title from field. And so what I've set up here is still the name part of the note so that I can type things into there. Then I'm referencing the client and then the call lasts from sys created at and then to sys last modified at, right? And so let's pretend someone's calling. Hey, how's it going? Um, and I'm recording that incoming call. So incoming call and you see immediately today at 1027 to last modified app. That's something I have to fix because there's a sys missing here. All right. And this is 1027 is the last time I edited this. And as the video progresses and I'm editing, you see that part changing, right? So um, I'm going to expand this and we're going to set the client to Acme and immediately you see now it's 1028, right? So from today, 1027 to 1028 is when I've been working on this call, right? So um, call on question about super tags. And I'm going to wait a second here to let more time pass so that you see the time changing once more. All right, so I've added uh, more info in next weekly check-in and you see here 1029, right? So I have from 1027 to 1029, that was a really quick call. Um, and now I have this recorded and I can tell them, okay, from then to then is when I worked on this. Now, the problem of course is that immediately when you change this node, this is going to change, right? So if you go back a week later and fix it, that's going to <laughs> add basically a week of time between these two dates um, as, a, as the last modified date. And to prevent that, what you can do is you can lock a node, right? So if you open, if you focus with your cursor into any node and then you hit Command K and then lock, you can lock a node and now there's nothing you can change here anymore. And so that means I can immediately see, okay, this node is locked. I should not edit this. I can't edit this. And then um, nothing can change here. Of course, if I change something here in the children, that is going to be recorded, right? So you can, um, if you want, lock all of them. And now um, nothing can be edited, but you can still add a new node and then this changes again, right? So this is not foolproof. This is not a total lockdown, if you will, of that node, but I think it helps tremendously in making sure if I do this sort of timekeeping with um, created at and modified at, I can do that. Now, an alternative um, is instead of using created at or last modified at, you can use C date and C time and M date and M time. So C date and C time and then M date 
and M time. And what you see is this formats the date differently, right? So um, C date and M date format this in year, month, day format, so ISO formatting, and the time equivalents, so C time and M time, give you the exact time down to the millisecond, and it gives you the time in UTC. So um, created at and modified at give it um, to you in terms of your local time, and they do the formatting of today's date and the weekday um, in, in that formatting, but C date and C time give you ISO formatted timestamps basically down to the millisecond. That can be useful depending on how you want to set things up, um, and I thought you should know that um, for future reference. But wait, there's more. <laughs> there are even more things and title expressions you can use, and I'm going to show you these in the context of a workshop template. So um, let me set that up really quickly, and then we'll walk through that step by step again. All right, so now I have set up a workshop tag. And what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through the different things I've done and how we can improve them with title expressions. So let's say I'm holding a workshop on how to use Tana inside a team or for a company. As you see, I have a client field that I can fill out. So let's use Acme again. And then a SOP, a standard operating procedure for how I want to prep um, any workshop. And let me show you how we can use this um, nicely with title expressions. Here we're going to fix the same problem that we had um, up here with, uh, with Google or with Acme Corp. I want to know where I'm holding that Tana for Teams workshop because presumably I'm going to do many more of them. So build title from fields, name, and then let's do at, and then client, right? And now I have Tana for Teams at Acme Corp. Now what's really cool is that if I have a description in the node, I can use that as well. So if I have here a short description of the purpose of the workshop, for example, what's really cool is I can add this description here to the title node, to the title of the node as well. So you see here, Tana for Teams, and now everything is in here. Right, that is, of course, a really um, long explanation. So what Tana allows us to do is actually shorten this to just a couple of characters. So if I add a pipe character here and then do 10 and then dots, you see after 10 characters of the description, it converts into dots, right? So show how to, that's 16 then, Right, show how teams can um, use Tana, right? So this is shortened. And that, of course, also works uh, with any field, right? So I could do that here for a client as well. So um, if we do five here, then it's just teams for uh, Tana for teams at Acme and the rest is missing. Very useful, especially if you have long client names or whatever. Um, then you can use that to shorten um, the information that is displayed given from any field that you're using. What you can also do, of course, is add multiple values to a field, right? That works in Tana out of the box. So what you can do is, or what happens is that multiple values are shown um, here as well, right? Now we have here at Acme Corp and Google, and if I add Tana um, as well, that gets added too, right? That's um, very useful. Now you see here, I have um, prep workshop and SOPs, right? For every workshop that I do, I want to prep it in the same way. So I have a um, standard operating procedure for how to do it. So I have here SOP and SOP task. Now, if I prep multiple workshops at the same time and I have the same tasks that I want to collect in a search, um, it becomes really difficult to distinguish, okay, design slides for which workshop, what am I actually talking about? So let me set that up and I'm going to show you the problem and then how we can solve it with title expressions. So now we have a Tana for Teams workshop at Acme Corp and one at Google. And 
here prep workshop, SOP, design slides, coordinate venue, a dry run presentation. And here I have a live query where I'm looking for SOP tasks, for example, right? And as you see, I have design slides twice, coordinate venue twice, dry run presentation. That's annoying, especially if you use standard operating procedures to do the same thing um, multiple times, possibly in parallel, so that can get annoying. What we can do is we can set the title expression for the prep workshop and the SOP tasks and have that illustrate here what each task is for really easily. So um, let me show you how that works. In the SOP super tag, we're going to do build title from teal, build title from fields, and we're going to do name and then for owner, right? And that shows me prep workshop for Tana for teams at Acme Corp, right? And here we have prep workshop for Tana for teams at Google. Now, what's really cool is that um, we can do this for the tasks as well. So we do build title from fields and we do name and then parentheses, for example, sys owner. And now we have here design slides for prep workshop for Tana for Teams, coordinated venue for prep workshop for Tana for Teams. And we have all of this down here um, as well, right? Now, of course, this is again, very long here. And so what we can do is we can actually for the SOP, um, compress this using the max number of characters, right? So for example, go in here and let's say uh, 20 characters, right? And that cuts down on all the uh, additional information we have here. And we still have, um, prep workshop for Tana for Teams and at Acme is visible and at Google is kind of visible. So um, that compresses everything a little bit and you can chain these things as you want. Now for tasks in particular, what you might want to do is actually also record when a task was completed and show that, right? And we can do that very easily because we can do sys done time over here, right? And right now that shows nothing because the task isn't done. But if I click this to be done, you see here um, today, Sunday, February 1050 is when this task was completed. And if I uncomplete it, um, that gets removed as well. Um, and if I click it again, um, I get the actual date when I clicked that button last. Now, one final thing that you can do that I want to show you is that if you have fields that aren't always filled out, you can make the display of these fields optional. So here, for example, I've added to the workshop super tag a field for venue, right? But I might not always have a venue that I can immediately fill out and having shown Acme Corp um, a venue here is kind of distracting. So what I can do instead is I put here a pipe and then a question mark. And now you see here the venue because it is not filled out is not shown. Um, but if I say here online, you see that gets immediately added. If I delete this, um, that gets removed again, right? So that means um, you aren't fixed in which fields you always have to display, you can say, okay, this field, I really don't uh, want to see all the time. Now, I hope this was useful to you. That was a basically complete tour through everything you can do with title expressions in Tana. It can do a ton, as you've seen, really useful for showing a lot of information at a glance in different contexts. So experiment with this. Um, also check out this video over here where I give you another um, example of setting up a intricate super tag system. You can play with that and um, see whether you can work title expressions into that as well. Otherwise, I invite you to join my course Mastering Tana Core, link down below, where I show you how to build your own super tag systems from scratch, how to iterate on them and become a pro at Tana. And I'll see you then in the next video. Bye bye.